Uh, hi, I'm Simon, and I am one of the creators of this show, and a co-editor, co-director, and uh, one of the writers of um, the writer of this particular episode. Joining me is Mike Fly. I'm going to introduce <laughs> Mike. Sorry, I just because Simon pointed at Mike, and I know I wasn't supposed to introduce Mike. Clap focus. Clap focus. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to introduce Mike. Uh, Mike Fly is here beside me, and uh, he's the producer of Versus Valerie, and one of the creators also. And this is Stephanie Calliner. I'm pointing at her, but you can't see that. Uh, <laughs> she is the head writer of the show and uh, also did the wardrobe and a lot of the production coordinating on the show as well. So, and is our biggest extra. Oh, yeah. She appears <laughs> in half the episodes. Yes, and also physically. We hired very tiny children and uh, dressed them up as adults and spent tons of money uh, to make them look like normal-sized people. But uh, Steph was the one that wasn't no, made up she, of yeah, children. She was, yeah. she was the specifically-sized regular person. I made fun of them for that because I was the biggest, finally, once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are now moving into the beginning of Cyborgs versus Valerie. So this is obviously our uh, like Babylon Five episode, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. This was shot at an office building on Bloor Street, and that Borg getup we didn't have for I think we, we, it was like two or three weeks before we were going to shoot this, and I'm like, we gotta get this. We can't just throw something together. This has to look awesome. So I put out the word on I think on Facebook, and somebody got back to me. You should, you should check in with um, with so and so. I can't remember so and so. Lori. Lori. Lori Hickling. That's right. Um, and I contacted Lori, who's a costume designer, and said, "You got to get this for me." And his tie has to be cybernetic. That was basically the one thing. I was like, cybernetic tie, and then a Borg head. And that's what she came up with. Yeah, and she murdered it, man. Will Conlon looks so good. This is actually the opposite. The offices of the Independent Production Fund, that that building, that yes. exterior shot. They're one of the funders of the show, along with the OMBC's uh, Interactive Digital Media Fund and JV Productions. But it was just kind of a nice way to like give them a nod. It, their offices look like they, from the exterior, it could be a telemarketing firm, so... It's, it's I thought funny. I thought you were suggesting that their offices look like a Borg cube. No, no, far <laughs> no. from it, actually. Awkward. We have some awesome people in this shot. Actually, the girl with the pink hair actually met her current boyfriend on our set. Ah, uh, yeah. Which is really cool to see that Bruce yeah. Valerie has uh, made love relationships happen. And he was in that shot. He was one of the red shirts that got fired. Mm-hmm. Joe? Joe, yeah. Joe, yeah. Yeah, and this is Alex Tyndall playing our uh, data style. Data-like. Uh, he's he's hilarious. Another improviser in Toronto who is awesome. And this is uh, Will Conlon from Out with Dad, and uh, he came in all the way. I forget. I think he lives in like Kitchener or something like that. So he had I to think drive the opposite way. Oh, I don't know. Boshua, maybe. Could be. He outside lives outside. <laughs> he lives far. He had a long drive. Yes, uh, but we uh, we were able to put him into a hotel room for the night, and he came and to our ridiculously early Sunday morning start time. Yeah. Yeah, and look at that Borg outfit. It looks so good. So much time and makeup for him, I felt terrible, but he needed it. There's a stapler on his hand, but unfortunately it's not a functioning stapler. I would have loved if, uh, instead of the little zzz, little gyro thing that the Borg have, if he had just a stapler he was sticking <laughs> stuff in his hand. <laughs> We also had a couple different, uh, two, I think two different blue shirts for this because um, one of them had to have the Borg stuff all like glued to it. Oh, yeah. And then one of them was, uh, you know, the, the regular, regular one. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things that I really like is the fact that in the reverse shot, you can actually see Kaya Green on oh, the, uh, the photocopier, photocopier back there. Yeah. Uh, you can barely see her there. And she's, she's uh, one of the writers on the show as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she did a uh, production assisting for us while we were shooting too. And uh, coming up here uh, is um, is the fun, uh, I, I don't know what you call this, like our, our office work video? I don't yeah, know. it's a training video. A training if video. If you've ever seen training videos and you know how insipid they can occasionally be. So that's sort of what I was going for in this segment. And I, I love, because uh, my instinct is to actually shoot the green screen. We did actually shoot the green screen fairly well. Uh, so we, it was actually a real challenge to go degrade the footage enough so that the green didn't key properly. Yeah, our, it's, our, it's intentionally bad, guys. <laughs> well, yeah, our, our, it was really funny talking to the guys on set, and they're like, oh, you can just drop a mask in there or something like that to make it look shitty. And I was like, why don't we just light it shitty? And uh, the, all my, my grip electric team were like, oh, no, we don't. 
we don't do shitty. <laughs> Which I was like, okay, fair enough. Good. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you putting all your effort it's into the this. the Iron Giant on the back of that thing. Yeah, that's my laptop, uh, which now has an Iron Giant sticker on the back, which I am very happy with, but you can see that I sort of put it on wrong, <laughs> and the giant isn't fully covering the He's laptop. got four eyes instead of two. It's hard to get those things He's on. He's bespeckled. <laughs> and once it's on, it is on, man. You can't peel that thing off. No. Why'd you want to? Uh, one of the other uh, things that I love in this uh, is that you've never actually seen that corner of the bedroom set, which, oh, is, yeah, yeah. which is interesting. Um, and uh, like the room itself, the geometry of the room had never been defined outside of that one camera angle in the uh, in the closet. There were people who That's saw. That's Chrono Bozo, by the way. There he is. Yeah. Anyway, go on. There were people who saw, who watched the vlogs and assumed that we were uh, some Hollywood studio shooting this and they were like this is all a set <laughs> it's like well yeah it is a set but it's real yeah too. it's genuinely my bedroom and we light it with two 200 watt bulbs and one 250 watt bulb in a chinese paper lantern so there you go there you go and i love that uh, the worst of the hitler's line is very funny yes mm -hmm. i think adam uh, made, uh, adam improvised that because I don't remember writing that. He also improvised Valerie La Predictable, which is, yep. I love that too. Where did we get this footage? Uh, this that? is, that's the Genesis way from Star Trek, and Davin went in and recreated most of it uh, so that we could kind of get a sense of that global spread. Know, spread. But um, this video uh, is Andrew Huang, uh, Songs to Our Pants To on YouTube. Uh, he did this uh, meme recut for us, and he did such a good job of it. Randy's Rules, you can find it on our uh, on the YouTube page. It's very funny. And you can watch the full uncut um, video, too. Like, the, you can see the the uh, parody version and the full uncut real version. Yeah, yes. the, uh, the uncut version is on Guy's channel, and then the Randy's, and then the Randy's Rules cat video is on uh, the Versus Valerie channel, I nice. think. Or, or Sex and Airball, I'm not sure which. Yeah. Watch all three of those channels. Watch everything that <laughs> is on there. Go on a YouTube, start with the letter A, work <laughs> your way down to the letter Z or Z if you're American. I like that uh, we went into the executives' offices here in this office environment and stole all their Dyson fans because we thought they looked really cool. <laughs> yeah. So for some reason, Randy has two of the most powerful bladeless fans <laughs> blowing air. Is that what that thing is? Yeah. I've never I heard of a Dyson a fan statue. until this show, <laughs> until we shot there. I'm like... And what are those things? Them. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> oh, I thought that they were like weird, uh, like modern art pieces. <laughs> well, they're sort of meant to look that way uh, and be really cool, but they're also like. How do they channel? Do they channel air just through like? There's a turbine in the bottom, and then they just have openings along all uh, those I edges. See. Yeah, they're not too exciting when you get down to the brass tacks of it, but they're really designed neatly. Right. This I hug like, is really funny. Yeah, this moment is very funny. I just love that blank stare on Alex's He's face. me. He tried so hard not to blink in any of the shots, uh, like unless he had to, uh, to show like some type of moment recognition. Yeah. yeah. And I and love that Randy calls it the blower. Yeah. <laughs> just got out the blower with HQ. It's such a ridiculous middle management bullshit line. I think I think the word I, I used in the script was horn. I just got off the horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so blower was actually... Blower, like, I think, was something he added. I love it. That's great. It's very funny. Oh, yeah. And I love Val's cubicle. Giant foam hand on her computer screen, yeah. fake plants everywhere. Little Rubik's Cube. <laughs> and I, I also realized, too, that like we didn't really do the math of her le like the exit of the scene. So we had all this stuff all over her desk, and then we have this awkward moment. If you watch the actual oh, real-time yeah. cut, it's like 25 seconds of her packing. Just collecting stuff, picking it up, yeah. and leaving. <laughs> but through the magic of editing, we resolve that. Yeah, that was another example of of Mike being like, we need to make her her uh, cubicle girly. <laughs> Steph, bring some of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you brought your giant foam hand and fake plants. Those hand. foam hands we found in the office. Remember, they were they were all over the office. It must have uh -huh. been just the one that we were shooting in. We had to Luckily. actually replace all of the light bulbs too on this floor. Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. So they were right. all actually um, consistent and daylight color temperature. And you can actually see in certain shots, like uh, right now it's daylight outside, 
uh, but it was, and now it's not. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, we, I thought it was just because the the shades are different at the higher vault at the higher altitude that with the camera just yeah, assumed. That's for sure. It definitely that's, not that it's now nighttime. No, outside. it's shadier because of the blinds. It took a really long time for her to pack up her desk. <laughs> Tw- I was twenty five seconds of nightfall that yeah. you just witnessed. <laughs> There's Aaron on the left. That's Another cool thing about the costumes here is Simon. It was Simon's idea to have everyone in shades of blue, uh, blue red, red, or, or yellow. yellow. Yeah. Like on Star Trek. Yes, guy. There it is. That was fun. I love shooting these little bits, too, at the end of the episodes, because um, at that point, uh, the cast was seeing the episode basically for the first time, and then they would actually, like... You know, it's that moment of like, oh, wow, this is awesome. We finally get to see the full cut version of the episode. And then we would record these things. Um, so generally we would do like two or three of them at a time. Uh, but it, like we would show them three episodes and then we'd shoot the, uh, I don't know what you even call these, end credits. Tailors. The tailors. Sure. Tailors. Tails. Tails. The tails. Tops and tails. These oh. are tails. And uh, it was really fun because, like, a lot of the time it was their genuine, like, that was amazing. And you can actually see how exciting it was on their faces, which I, I kind of like. Yeah, it's such a big difference when you see with the full music and all the effects. Oh, and the color correction too. Like all of yeah. that. When you yeah, those those three pieces from the rough cut that we pass around and we lock our picture on, the difference to the end of like the finished product is very dramatic. Thanks, Brad. Indeed. Well, Brad, for yeah. sure. Every second Brad. episode, we should be thanking Brad. Well, and George, yeah. George Flores is our oh, sound yeah. designer. Oh, and yeah. He did mm-hmm. such an amazing job. Oh, my God. It was so much fun to work with him. He has a studio set up in his uh, house. Like, the whole, like, third floor of his house is just, like, a perfect sound studio. And, uh, you know, he's a, he works on movies. And uh, he, you know, took this huge pay cut because he really liked the show. He worked for us. And, um, you know, we were ever, forever thankful that he gave us a, a Dolby 5.1 mix for the show uh, just a super awesome dude and yeah. really fun to work with totally awesome thanks cool. George thank you George and thanks guys for listening hey we'll see you in episode 4 uh, are we going to have a guest in episode 4 you bet your butt yeah we will have, to, we will have a guest it? we'll probably have Alice Moran uh, Alice Moran yeah yeah, yeah. the writer awesome. of episode 4 nice All right. come back and watch episode 4 <laughs>